Ideas Have Consequences by Richard Weaver. The issue ultimately involved is whether there is a source of truth higher than and independent of man. The answer to the question is decisive for one's view of nature and destiny of humankind. The practical result of our current philosophy is to banish the reality which is perceived by the intellect and to posit as reality that which is perceived by the senses. The shift is from the truth of the intellect to the facts of experience. With this change in the affirmation of what is real, the whole orientation of the culture takes a turn and we are on the road to modern empiricism. Scholars of the Middle Ages were founded on logic, a mechanism of the intellect. Modern scientists are founded on observation, a mechanism of the senses. The story of this shift has been told many times, and since it has usually been told as a story of progress, it is extremely difficult today to get people in any number to see contrary implications. Our most serious obstacle is that people traveling this downward path develop an insensibility which increases with their degradation. The denial of universals carries with it the denial of everything transcending experience. The denial of everything transcending experience means inevitably the denial of truth. It is our destiny to be faced originally with the world as our primary datum, but not to end our course with only a wealth of sensory impressions. The most elementary understanding requires a degree of abstraction. It is our various supposals about a matter which give it meaning and not some intrinsic property which can be seized in the bare hand fashion of the barbarian. In his use of the term barbarian here, the barbarian is one who cannot distinguish between civilization and nature, who has no sense of the centuries-long struggle on which he depends, but fails to completely understand. Since both knowledge and virtue require the concept of transcendence, they are really obnoxious to those committed to material standards. In the same way that our cognition passes from a report of particular details to a knowledge of universals, so our sentiments pass from a welter of feeling to an illumined concept of what one ought to feel. Somewhere, moreover, the metaphysicians of publicity have absorbed the idea that the goal of life is happiness through comfort. It is a state of complacency supposed to ensue when the physical appetites have been well satisfied. Man's destiny in the world is not to perfect himself, but to lean back in sensual enjoyment. This is the Philistine version of man in pursuit of happiness. Advertising fosters the concept, social democracy approves it, and the acceptance is so wide that it's virtually impossible today except from the religious rostrum, to teach that life means discipline and sacrifice. A society spoiled in this manner may be compared to a drunkard. The more he imbibes, the less he is able to work and acquire the means to indulge his habit. The more man has to indulge in, the less disposed he is to endure the discipline of toil. That is to say, the less willing he is to produce that which is to be consumed. A great material establishment, by its very temptation to luxuriousness, unfits the owner for the labor necessary to maintain it, as has been observed countless times in the histories of individuals and of nations. There is no correlation between the degree of comfort enjoyed and the achievement of a civilization. On the contrary, absorption in ease is one of the most reliable signs of present or impending decay. <laughs>